Hello everyone and welcome to this um, Social Europe uh, video cast. My name is Robin Wilson, I'm the editor of Social Europe and with me today um, I have um, Juliana Hernandez, Executive Director of Artemisis, an organisation focused on political influence and innovation from a feminist standpoint in Colombia. And I'm talking to um, Juliana as part of a project on the future of social democracy in this decade, um, which is being supported by the Foundation for European Progressive Studies and the Friedrich A. Birch Stiftung. Um, and we felt it was important as part of that project to take a look at Colombia uh, because of the recent election which has seen, for the first time in Colombia's history, the election of a left-wing president. Um, but also the election of the first Afro-Colombian Afro woman to become vice president and she is to lead a new equality ministry. And Juliana, that's my first question to you. Why is it you think that gender parity in government, and it has been discussed across Latin America, including in Chile, not just in Colombia, why is it so important? Well, it's very important because in Colombia and in Latin America, less than 30% of, of the Congress people are women. And that has to do with the politics and the laws that are created in, this, in these places. I think that parity is very important because it's a measure of redistribution, a recognition and reduction of inequalities that men, unfortunately, cannot see because of the patriarchy system, because of the way they have been living and because they have been in power during the whole history and that has to change. So here in Latin America, like given the processes that we have, given the inequalities that we have to live, it's very important that 50% of people in power are women and not only white women, cisgender women, straight women, but we also have to talk about the parity that includes black women and indigenous women that give us the opportunity to talk about reduction of inequalities that is going to be something very important given that Francia Marquez is going to be our, our vice president and also <clears throat> the minister of the inequality, of equality, sorry. So that's why it's important that women is, like, are on these uh, places, not only Congress, but also as, as vice presidents, also as ministers, so we can see a change and we can see that we are represented in those places where, we, where men have been always during the whole history deciding for us. This year, for example, it's very important that women are in Congress because we are going to legislate the interruption of, of, of pregnancy and that is going to happen in the Congress. And if men are going to take the decisions for us, there is not a possibility to live in a society that recognizes, that knows that sees that our problems are completely different to the, to the problems that men, lives, uh, that men live every day. So that's why it's very important not only in Colombia or Latin America to talk about parity, but also it's an agenda that is quite important in the world. So maybe um, what we were talking before this, uh, we can change the world. We can change the way we deal with conflicts. We can change the way we see the other and the difference as something very important that strengthen democracy and not as a threat to democracy. So, yes, that's why, why it's very important that women are in power right now in Colombia and in the world. Okay, let me break that down a little bit further, um, Juliana, um, because there are two aspects of it. You could argue one is the substantive issue that's to say aspect that is to say what are the issues which should now be coming to the forefront of the agenda <laughs> from a feminist standpoint which weren't there before and then the second question is how does it affect the way politics is done does it change the processes by which politics is done so let me ask you the first question first what do you think will change or can change about the political agenda in Colombia if we have a gender parity government in power, for instance, on issues like reproductive rights or uh, gender inequalities in income and pay or the position of women in the informal economy or whatever you think are the important issues. Well, this is a very important moment of history in Colombia, not only because of the last elections, but also because 
this year we're going to know about the Truth Commission report, and that is like the history of the conflict in Colombia. And in this moment of Colombia, it's very important that women, especially women who have been part of the conflict, being raped, being displaced, can like make decisions on their own lives. So I think that is going to be one of the main agendas and one of the most important agendas for the, for the next four years, and is talk about peace the peace pro, uh, process that had been left behind by the President Duque, Ivan Duque, who, does, who doesn't care about what, ha what happened in Colombia with the conflict and what are the consequences of the war that we have been living for years. So it's very important that in the government, in the ministers that Gustavo Petro uh, is going to elect, we can see women and we can see women in the main ministers of Colombia, agriculture, education, defense, culture, because like in the history, we have only been in the culture minister. And those are like ministers who hadn't been important for the government so don't, or doesn't have enough money to do things. And right now talking about peace, right now talking about the Truth Commission report is very important. And it's also important for the implementation of the peace agreement in Colombia that women are making part of those decisions. I think that is not going to be enough to have a parity, parity in the ministers, but we also need parity in all, like, like in a, like in all every single part of the power, in the executive power of Colombia, in the Congress, in the like in different pla places, because this moment of history has to deal with the fact that we are facing the truth of something that we don't want to know, that we don't want to see face to face. That is conflict. That is the history, that is the names of the people who were behind uh, massacres, killing, murders, displacement, threatens to people who are very important. Um, I think that parity like, is going to produce in Colombia, at least in the minister, the chance that women in different parts of the country who lives political violence every single time that they try to run for politics, the opportunity to see themselves represented by women. And like, it's very important for politics to see representation, to see that you can identify with the people who are in power. And that is going to happen like with this government and is going to have an effect in young people who are, who, are, who are very interested in participating in politics, especially since last year that we have these massive mobilizations around the country. And like these mobilizations produce that young people, mainly young women, like are trying to participate in politics, are interested in politics, and only if we have women in politics, we can see, like we can reduce that gap that makes women don't feel attracted and are not interested in participating in politics. And when we don't participate in politics, it's not only about recognition, it's not only about like feeling identified with the women who are in power. It has to, de it has to de do also with the agendas that we bring as women. This government is talking for the first time about a national care system, and that is something very new because it's about reducing the inequalities that we have lived as women forever, like since ever. Uh, secondly, I think that equal participation, equal political participation in the cabinet, in the cabinet, in the caucus that Gustavo Petro is going to have in the Congress, is very important since, it, since it's going to allow civil society organizations women leaderships to talk directly with the power because there is a gap when we try to go to the power and explain to these congressmen and try to explain to the president that our problems that our lives are completely different to what they live that we are raped that when we are in conflict we are like a weapon for for men to threaten communities to displacement to have different business so I think that parity is also a measure of distribution of power, of money, of opportunities, of education, of the opportunities that we can have not only in the main cities, but also in the countryside of, the, of, of Colombia. It's a measure of recognitions that we, have, that we haven't been in power, never, not with representation. We were less than 20% uh, in the Congress before this election. And also it's a measure that can produce a reduction of inequalities, since we have these agendas of national care system, since we are talking about economic autonomy of women in this government and for the next years, 
and since we are talking also about political participation, that it's the only way that we have to change our societies. If we are not in power, it's completely like we cannot change things for us. Two key things you've mentioned there, Heliana. Um, one was the overhang of the conflict and the other one, the idea of a national care system. Let me ask you first about the, the way that the conflict in Colombia, which went on for decades, still casts such a huge shadow over the society. Is what you are suggesting that having a Congress that is half women and half men, having this commitment to um, gender parity, will allow the conflict to be approached in a more honest way, perhaps, uh, and maybe in a less polarised way than has been the case so far. Do you think that having more women involved in that discussion may make it a more productive discussion and one that is more willing to be to face up to some difficult, difficult truths? Well, I think that, I don't know if we are going to reduce polarization because like the truth that we are going to face uh, has to deal also with the state and has to deal with the like entrepreneurs and it has to do with very important people in Colombia. So it's going to be very hard that they accept, that this society accept that the state also murdered people, that the state was part of the massacres that we lived for years in Colombia. But I think that the participation of women in the Congress and in politics is going to help to like to change the broken of the social fabric in Colombia that was produced because of the armed conflict that we have lived in for years. I think that these women, especially the women who are now in the Congress that are going to be in the Congress for the next four years, are women that represent different causes. One of them is a black woman, one of them is an indigenous woman, the other one is uh, like people from the countryside, a farmer men and a farmer women, teachers. And I think that the approach that they are going to have of the conflict is going to be completely different to what we have lived for, lived for the last four years in a government that says that there is no conflict in Colombia, that says that things are working, that just stole billions of pesos here in Colombia that were meant to help people to implement the peace agreement in Com to the implementation of the peace agreement in Colombia. So I think that, yes, I don't know if we're going to reduce polarization, but at least we're going to change the perspective that we have about conflict. It's going to change the perspective that we have about the truth in Colombia and about the truth of what happened to women in conflict. That what happens like also like dreaming about the future thinking about a society where women have the power on their bodies, on their lives, on their families, and not only thinking about being displaced, not only thinking about their children get murdered in, on the streets, on the country. Um, so yes, I think it's going to change more the perspective than polarization here in Colombia. Well, one of the ways in which the conflict is not in the past, uh, Juliana, is obviously the number of killings there have been in recent years since the agreement with the FARC of uh, various representatives of NGOs, including human rights defenders, um, including, of course, in some cases, women. Um, do you think that the new government will be able to bring an end to uh, those killings because uh, they have clearly been devastating for civil society organizations in Colombia and um, have seemed to indicate that violence is not, as far as the state is concerned, a thing of the past. Well, I think that um, it's very difficult to change things in four years and also because of like because the state hasn't been in so many parts of the country and those parts are like governed by armed uh, groups so like unless you go to the structural problems that we have and it's about also drugs it's about like the security politics uh, approach that we have none of those things are going to change i think that is going to change the fact that is going to be reduced the assassination of the demobilized people from the from the FARC. 
um, I think that there is a huge chance to change the way we are protecting our, our, our environmental, environmental male leaders and also an approach to have warning systems that can allow us to know who, are, who is going to be murdered because you can know that in Colombia, so, like in so many cases, because you know when you're going to be murdered in Colombia if you are a leadership, because you know who you are facing with, you know who is your conflict with, you know who is your enemy on the field. So like Petro has a huge challenge and also Francia Marquez going to the structural causes that produce conflict in Colombia and has to do with inequalities and also has to do with the drug problem that we are facing in Colombia. If we don't change the perspective of the national security politics that we have right now, nothing is going to change because we are based and we believe that the other person, that the group that we are facing is our enemy. And I don't think that those groups are 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 are, are enemies. I think that there are people who don't have the chances or the opportunities to go to a school, to have like to don't be poor to don't be poor. So that's what produces the conflict in Colombia. And I think that some proposals and some agendas of the president, Gustavo Petro, can go to the main causes that have produced conflict in Colombia. It has also to do with the lands in Colombia, with the concentration of wealth in Colombia, and what he proposes that is going to be a huge problem for the main uh, people, who, the people who have hold power for, like, for, since ever, um, he's going to attack these inequalities and he's going to produce maybe d by doing this um, a reduction of the assassinations and a recognition of this assassination as a way to control territories, to control the people, to control like the accumulation of wealthness that there is in Colombia. So yes, I think that is going to be that he can reduce these assassinations, but it's not going to happen this year or next year because it's a long-term uh, public policy and also a long-term security policy. See. Well, let's come back to your point um, in social policy terms. Uh, uh, Juliana, you were talking about the idea of a national care strategy. Now, presumably the idea of a national care strategy is that women are responsible for almost all care in the home and you want this to be more shared with men and more socialized so that women can be freer uh, to pursue their own projects um, in life. Um, but what does the idea of a national care strategy mean to you and how much would that be transformative of, of Colombian society? I think that this is like the main agenda and this is like a huge agenda and a very important agenda for feminists and it has to do also with the feminization of politics. When we recognize that women work an additional seven hours to what men work in their lives, like we have to go to our jobs, we have to be there for eight hours and then we have to get home to clean, to be with our children, to be with our husbands, we have to cook, we have to clean. And that means that we are working more than 18 hours during the day. And I think that this is the feminization of, of politics when you can recognize that women are holding, are holding the life. When you talk about care, you're, taking, you're talking about the life. You cannot live, like non-society, not the world can, can, cannot live without care systems. And this is, main, like, this is the main agenda because he recognizes and this, this government recognizes that we are working without a recognition it includes a payment for women, not only the women that are, that are working right now, but he's also talking about like a, how do you say that, a pension, um, like a pension when you get old and he wants to do it like for women who have been working all their lives in care, like doing care in their, in their families, in their houses. And this is going to be very important because it recognizes that we as women have been behind the power, have been behind the society, holding, uh, holding it, taking care of it. So this is going to be a change, a completely change for society. It's going to help to reduce poverty and feminization of poverty in Colombia. It's going to help also to the economy because women don't have money. We live like, like because we are not participating in the formal 
uh, labor market. We are participating in the, in the informal labor market, and that means that we don't have the rights, like the legal rights, that the, the labor rights that we should have. And that is something that is going to change with this government. And it's a long-term policy. It's a long-term uh, work that feminists have done in Colombia since the 70s. They have been talking about the national court system. They have been talking about the importance of introducing this topic, at least in the, co in the political conversation. So yes, I think that that is one of the most important things. And that is one of the most, like, yes, that, that gives hope. hope. Like, because we can see that something is changing in politics with this national care system that Gustavo Petro is going to implement during the next four years. Okay, finally then, um, Juana, supposing you were able to uh, have uh, the power to install in Colombia tomorrow a feminist democracy, um, Supposing it, power was entirely in your hands to do this and no men were getting in the way. How would this look, do you think? How would it differ <laughs> from the Colombia of today? Well, for us, like in, like in feminist organizations, like we think that a feminist democracy is about redistributing the power, the wealthness, the resources that, belong, that, has belong, that have belonged to men during the whole history. We are talking about recognition and we are talking about measures that include that we are victims of political violence, that we are victims of the armed conflict, that there is no possibility of having a democracy in Colombia if we have war. And it's not like possible to have peace or democracy if women are not participating in the decisions that are, that are made in different, like, different places of power. A feminist democracy that is possible for the next four years is a democracy that puts in the center of the agenda the care, like because we are taking care of society, we are taking care of the resources, of the national resources in Colombia. We are taking care of peace processes in the local and, and the different regions in Colombia, but we have never been recognized as main actors, as people who are changing, as people who are holding the net factory that has been broken during the conflict. It's also about recognizing the obstacles that we face to participate in market, not like work, like in politics, to make part of the education, of the formal education system, that we have the right to have health system for all of us. And that's what we are talking about when we talk about feminist demo the democracy. We're not talking about a democracy only for women. We are talking about a democracy for all the people, like for the 90%, 99% that Nancy Fraser talks about. And it's like the 99% of Colombia like lives in poverty, lives in invisibility. Like 99% of people who don't have the chances to have a dignity, like to have dignity in their lives. That's what we, that's what we are talking about when we talk about feminization of politics, but also a feminist democracy. So, yes, I think that's what we are doing and that's what, what we are fighting for the last years in Colombia. Thank you very much, uh, Juliana. Um, you've been listening to um, Juliana um, Hernandez, the executive director of Artemisis, um, an organization based in uh, Colombia. Um, in order for us to look at the impact and implications of the recent election of a left-wing government for the first time in the country, but specifically through a feminist lens. Thank you very much, um, Julian. That was really informative. I really appreciate um, you speaking to us today. And thank you, everybody, for listening.